morning. So we're back again. We're thinking about the question about what makes us feel secure. Um, and we're going to do that as we look at Psalm 62. But before we do that, we're going to ask the Lord to help us. So let's, let's pray. Father, we come to you. We thank you that you are the God who um, likes to uh, enable us to understand your word. You're the God who likes to speak into our lives. And we pray that you would give us ears to hear what you would say to us this day. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would illuminate your word in such a way as that it has an impact upon us and changes us. For Jesus' sake, we ask. Amen. Psalm 62. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress and I shall never be shaken. How long will you assault a man? Would all of you throw him down? This leaning wall, this tottering fence? They fully intend to topple him from his lofty place. They take delight in lies and with their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall not be shaken. My salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Low-born men are but a breath. The high-born are but a lie. If weighed in on a balance, they are nothing. Together they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or take pride in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things have I heard, that you, O God, are strong and that you, O Lord, are loving. Surely you will reward each person according to what he has done. So what was your life built upon before coronavirus turned it upside down? What were the things that were most important to you, that got you out of bed every morning, that gave you a sense of well-being, of purpose? And how many of those things have been taken from you um, as lockdown has begun? How many of those things have been removed from your life that you thought were giving you uh, a sense of well-being and a sense of purpose? Well, before lockdown becomes the new normal and you start adding new things into your life that give you this new sense of security that you're looking for, um, the I will be okay as so long as I have this or I can do that, the kind of non-negotiables that we like to think are a part of our life. Ask yourself this question. Could you, could this be rather, God showing me where I am going wrong? Could this be God showing me where I am going, mar going wrong? Naturally, we all want to feel safe and secure. It's part of uh, life that we want to feel uh, as though we are safe and secure. And a massive part of that feeling uh, comes about um, through personal identity, what we think is our reason to be, what we think, um, as it were, is the, is the central core of who we are. Um, and people derive meaning uh, and their well-being from what they value, so what they deem to be the most important thing uh, in their life, the most important thing that they live for. Now, if that's yourself, then you've got a bit of a struggle there because you often let yourself down. Um, but if it's other things, if it's things that are outside of you, then if what we value crumbles before our eyes or is challenged in some way that we don't like, we perceive it in a way that we perceive to be a threat, then we personally begin to crumble, don't we? So if what we value crumbles, we crumble. And if what we uh, value is attacked, then we go on the defensive. We uh, feel that uh, that injustice, as it were, of, of our... Um, the thing that we value being being uh, attacked. Now, if we form our identity or value from temporary things, uh, then we open ourselves up to be vulnerable, don't we? Uh, things like status or position or money or work or empire or success or, or often even in these days, um, a kind of uh, external things like um, choices of, uh, of who we are sexually and all that kind of thing. If all of this is uh, what we build our lives upon, then we, we discover when it's taken away from us that uh, we have the wind knocked out of ourselves. We discover that uh, that it wasn't as uh, as much of, of who we thought, much a part of us as we thought it was. Um, but in actual fact, we discover that we exist outside of that, as it were. There is we don't gain our value from it in in reality, um, and so we end up with our wind being knocked out of ourselves. We end up at sea. We end up aimless, and we're not sure of who we are. Well, David the psalmist comes to us and he is sure of who he is. Uh, he is one who soul rests in God. He is not at war with God. You know, so often what we discover is that as we live our lives, um, as we live our lives here on earth, 
Um, we often have an unrest that is within us. It's, it works away at us. We always want something more. And the reality is, is that that something more that we want is God. And here is David. He's discovered that his something more is God and his soul is secure. His soul is resting in God. He's no longer at loggerheads. He's no longer um, got no hope or no future. He has a hope. He has a future. He has an eternity secured for him. And he's a blessed place to be indeed. So to be like David in the midst of a coronavirus for instance, would be a very good place to be because you know that you are secure in the midst of it. He's one who is saved. Um, the psalm tells us that, that the sins of his life has been have been atoned for. Um, God has rescued him, not because of any goodness in, in David or, or any goodness that is potentially in David. It's not that God looked at David's life and he thought, well, I can make use of him, so I'll save him. But there was none of that. God simply chose to save him, simply chose to work in his life and call him to himself. Um, he is one who is sheltering in God. So his identity, his security, his purpose is found in God and found in the way that God works in his life. Um, he shelters in God like you would shelter in, in a mighty fortress. So if you are being attacked by an enemy, what you want is a big place to hide in, in order that the enemy can't get to you. And so when you come to God, uh, when you recognize that he has saved you, that he is the one who is at work in your life, then you are secure in him. And he is that mighty, impenetrable fortress that no one can get through and no one can destroy. Nothing can remo remove his security. Nothing can remove uh, David's sense of well-being because he is safe in his saviour. Uh, he cannot be shaken. That's what the text tells us. Uh, or he, I will not be shaken. Um, he uh, understands that God is there with him and God is keeping him secure unsurprisingly as he feels this he's he's calling others to turn to God he's calling others to come and to search out God and verses 8 to 12 we find the things that he recommends about knowing God so he tells people first and foremost not to uh, go after the things that are temporary, not to go after those things which seem to have an appeal. He even tells them not to go after ill-gotten gains, just in case they've got a, a mind to do and do that um, in this day, in his day and, and time. And, and we can see that in our own time. Everyone wants something for nothing and quite happy to get something for nothing if they can, if they can pull the wool over someone's eyes. Well, he is, uh, what he says is, if you if you want the same security that I have, if you want to have that uh, peace, that, that soul rest, if you want to know what it is to shelter in God, then you need to understand some things about him. You need to understand that you can pour out your heart to him. You can pour out your heart to him and you can tell him anything and he will listen and he will take it all on board. And do you know what's even better? There is no data security issues with him. It's not like the Zoom uh, security issues that we've been hearing about in the press, you know, that uh, maybe somebody can come and uh, interact in, in your chat room and, uh, and you're having a conversation with God, as it were, and somebody else bombs in and, uh, and can get a hold of what you're saying. Well, there's none of that. When you are talking to God, there is this reality that you can pour out your heart to him and you can know that he has he is everything that you say and you can tell him absolutely everything and he's still listening and he still cares and it's not that he's going to go and inform the press on you as it were um, we discover as well that he says to us if we want to know something of this security we need to understand that god is strong now whatever you measure strength by um, in on in this earth as it were whatever you me measure strength by there's always something stronger coming along so all earthly forms of strength are temporary and will be surpassed by something um, but never with God never is that the case God is always permanently strong he is the strongest uh, there is no one equal to God he is altogether other that's the whole point about the holiness of God he is removed from us he is uh, something other than we are in and that's an understanding that as he is strong we can depend upon that strength there's not going to be a foe that comes along and rips us out of his hands we are permanently secure in his hands none can pluck us uh, from his hands the bible says uh, not only that he is loving he is one um, who uh, has demonstrated his love to us and he's demonstrated to us his love to us in probably the best way possible he's demonstrated his love to us in in that uh, the uh, jesus christ came uh, god in human flesh came to rescue us from our sin from the penalty of our sin uh, dying in our place uh, and securing uh, our, our forgiveness um, 
and, and getting an eternity with him. These are the blessings of knowing God. He is a loving God. He is a, a strong God. He's one that you can pour out your heart to. But then fourthly, he is a God who will reward. Here is the reality. If you trust in God, there are rewards in trusting in, trusting in him. Um, God rewards all who trust in, in him. The question is, have you done that? Have you turned to God? Have you sought him? In, in these days in which we feel so at sea because we've had all these things taken from us, um, do you know that security because you've asked the Lord Jesus into your life? Well, I trust that you have. Uh, if you haven't, uh, pray and ask him to, for forgiveness. Pray and ask him to come into your life and then begin your walk with him. Once you know that God is in your life, then you can be like uh, Habakkuk of old in the Old Testament, chapter 3 and verses 17 to 19, um, where he declares this. He says, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, uh, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stall, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and he enables me to tread on the heights. You see, to know God in your life is to know security, to know not just any old security, but eternal security. So that no matter what is taken from us, we are always permanently secure in God. And that's a blessing to know that in your life. If you don't know that, then I, I plead with you to, to come to know him in these days. Do not put it off. Accept what he has offered to you. Accept the salvation that is on hand. And trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your own saviour. Let's pray. Father, we pray that there would be many who turn to know, uh, to know the Lord Jesus Christ in these days. That there would be a turning from sin, uh, a repentance uh, and a seeking of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, that in your grace that you would answer the prayers of all those that call out to you. Lord, we thank you that that is the one prayer that you guarantee that you will answer. That, uh, uh, that no one who puts their uh, hope in you will ever be put to shame. Um, but Lord, indeed, you, anyone who calls on you uh, will be saved. And we praise you and thank you for this. We pray, Lord, that you'd be at work in the lives of all of our family and friends, that they too would know the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, and that they too would know the security that only comes through him. So we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.